welcome everybody and thank you for taking the time to join us as we are uh, going to cover a few basics on the Mars 6 vessels and also um, the control options. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, with the Mars 6, there are uh, a few different types of vessels that we will discuss today, uh, beginning with the Mars Express. Please note that the Mars Express does come in 10, 20, 55, and 75 mil sizes all based on your particular application, sample size, and volumes. Uh, again, this will be something that we here at CM will be able to assist you with in determining the best one. The Mars Express Plus vessel is a 110 mil express vessel, uh, which will allow for a little bit larger sample size. Also, we're going to cover the Easy Prep and Easy Prep Plus. What is the difference and where do I use them? And then we'll conclude with the iPrep, which is our latest vessel um, that will allow us to do higher temps and pressures concurrently. Okay. Before we get too, too far into the vessel, let's go ahead and talk about a few of the control options. The Mars 6 offers a variety of ways to control temperature. The first is what we call standard IR, uh, most commonly used with Express and Express Plus. The next is fiber optic. Fiber optic is exactly what it sounds like. There is a single control vessel for Easy Prep and Easy Prep Plus, and you have a fiber optic probe that is inside uh, the liquid. The next is iWay. This is our latest temperature control option, and it's a contactless uh, temperature measuring apparatus, the same as standard IR, but it works in a different way, and actually, uh, as opposed to standard IR, which measures more surface area, emitted heat, iWay penetrates through the material and is taken more of an internal temperature, much like a fiber optic. Pressure control. Now, pressure control is something that is um, reducing or not as common any longer, but there are still uh, times to use it. And for pressure control, we have a single pressure line that will attach to the Mars 6, and then we'll attach to your Easy Prep or Easy Prep Plus control vessel. We'll see an image of those two vessel types uh, shortly. First, let's go ahead and start with Mars Express and, and Mars Express Plus. These are the most popular vessels in the world. Um, the maximum temperature that we recommend for use of these vessels is 210 degrees Celsius. Now, the majority, the vast majority of Express and Express Plus applications uh, run in the 180 to 200 degrees C range. Uh, but again, 210 is your maximum operating uh, temperature for these two vessel types. A half gram of dry is going to be the most you can do uh, with these two vessel types. Again, especially with organics, what we're looking at is when doing organics, you're oxidizing, you're creating a lot of pressure. So as you guys all understand, a smaller sample size is, is required. So when, it, when we're talking organics, you may be even lower than that half gram. Limited HF. Well, the Mars Express and Express Plus vessels are vent and reseal vessels by design for moderate temp and moderate pressures. If we want to do any HF work above 180 degrees C, we're gonna have to move into another vessel. The express vessel will vent at a lower pressure and nobody wants HF venting out. Therefore, we do have a 180 C limit for performing HF digest in Express and Express Plus. Also, we recommend not to exceed more than 45 minutes of runtime, just due to the nature of the digest that we're doing in these two vessel types. And as I mentioned before, they do come in a variety of sizes, ranging from 10 to 75, and then also 110 for the plus. 
Now, with Express and Express Plus, you can use either standard IR or iWave. Both control types are contactless and require no connections, and both are suitable for the Express Express Plus. With these vessel types, there are no control, there's no pressure control because, as I mentioned earlier, these are a true vent and reseal or self regulating vessel, meaning as it reaches a certain pressure within the vessel by design, the geometry of the plug and the cap is going to vent or burp or release some gas. Okay. So what are some of the advantages? Well, it's very easy to put together. Three simple parts. There's a liner, a plug, and a cap. The turntable is 40 positions with two concentric rings, an inner row of 16, an outer row of 24. We can run anywhere from four samples um, to 40 as, a, as your maximum. Uh, we mentioned that it used to be a minimum of eight, but better temperature, temperature control over the year has allowed us to reduce it to a minimum of four vessels. And again, just trying to drive home that point that they are available in different sizes from 10 for really small scale, maybe some biological tissues at one to two mils of acid, up to 75 mils where we're doing maybe some regulatory EPA large water samples or maybe some larger food samples um, or maybe some pharmaceutical ingredients, okay? So speaking of that, let's look at some applications. Well, as I mentioned, US EPA, that is uh, one of the most prevalent applications used for Express. Um, it is, again, a pretty moderate temperature of 170, 175. Even the European norm methods are around 180. So these are this is a perfect vessel for high throughput, easy to assemble, very, very moderate temp and pressure applications. There's also a variety of AOAC methods that fall well within the parameters of these vessels. And we do a lot of works with feed and fertilizers in the express vessels. As a matter of fact, there's a preloaded CEM one touch AOAC method for feed and fertilizers. Plant animal fish tissue, very simple digest. This is another great application for express due to the ease of digestion and most time sample throughput is required in these types of environments. Now, when, we, when we're talking about pharmaceuticals, um, we're talking about some of your more simple ingredients or a finished product that does not have a large amount of API in it. So as long as you can get it successfully digested in the 200, 210 range, then again, the Express is a good fit. And then, of course, nutraceuticals still falls in that same realm. The one thing to make note with some of these nutraceuticals is that oftentimes you will have some salacious material remaining, uh, since a lot of this is plant or root based. And so you will have to filter the sample in order to get rid of the silicates. If you are going to uh, quantify silica, then you will need to move into a different vessel so that we can perform a digest at a little bit higher temperature with the HF. Okay, some other things we can do in Express are some of your very light edible oils. Obviously here we're going to have to be careful and cognizant of sample size. You know, probably in that 100, 150 milligram um, Sample range is going to be a good starting point. Some of these light oils, uh, we would have to definitely perform a very good pre-digest and make sure that uh, we get the ball rolling with those samples. And as I mentioned earlier, with some of our smaller vessel sizes, like the 10 and 20, biologic and clinical are very good applications. Um, many years ago, we did a lot of testing with our consumer product service and the reason being was for toy testing because what's one of the first things a child does when he opens a brand new toy, plastic toy, and goes straight to the mouth. So there was a big, a 
big effort made many years ago, probably about 10 years ago, for testing the plastics in toys. And we're going to see a very short video here in a second that was sent to us by an independent lab up in Rhode Island. Um, they just sent us the video because their local news agency um, did a story, and they mentioned the Mars, so they decided to send it to us. Um, Real quick, before we get to the video, though, uh, again, with Express, we can leach some mine samples. And the reason we say leaching mine, mining samples is because if you have any salacious material remaining, again, since we're at a 180-degree limit for HF, you have to do a leaching method. If you have to do a total digest, put all of the salacious into solution, then you may need, well, you will have to move into a different temperature, into a different vessel because we'll have to exceed 180 C. And then some of your easier plastics as well, such as your nylon. So sit back for a couple of minutes. We've got a short video that was sent to us from a private lab up in Rhode Island. Here's one of our technicians preparing your sample for microwave digestion. Process begins by adding one of several acids to the digestion vessel. Once the sample is been prepared, the technician will load the vessel into the microwave carousel. Our technician places the carousel into the microwave. Microwave digestion is a new standard operating procedure for lead and plastic substrate materials. Now that your sample has been processed for microwave digestion, we're off to the Metals Laboratory for inductively coupled plasma analysis, IEC. Okay, so as you can see during that short video, uh, this is a few years old, as I mentioned, uh, with this uh, toy testing initiative because that was a Mars 5, not even a Mars 6. So uh, real quick, let's look at a couple of the um, parameters that we use uh, again previously mentioned up to half a gram of dry sample weight we commonly will uh, use 10 mils of nitric uh, for our organic digest uh, because again we're going well, well above the boiling point so we're able to destroy uh, most of the uh, matrix uh, in that 180 to 200 c for express applications and sometimes based on the analytes of interest uh, we will use a 9 to 1 of nitric and HCl, all based on stabilizing uh, certain elements such as silver, silver, barium, antimony, and if there's high concentrations of iron and or aluminum. Um, we can reduce volume because nowadays a lot of people are trying to reduce um, their dilutions, get a higher signal. So we can reduce volume. Uh, we would probably start with dropping it down to seven or eight mils. Uh, the important thing is to make sure that your sample is completely wetted. Uh, if you have a sample that likes to go exothermic uh, pretty pretty quickly, uh, this is even after the fact of doing a pre-digest. Sometimes we'll change up the cocktail from 10 mils of nitric to maybe eight mils and add a couple of mils of water to help try to quench that a little bit, if you will. And we always use ramp to temperature control. Um, you'll see up at the top, we state except for EPA. EPA is a different animal altogether. We have a very specific preloaded regulatory method loaded that has a different uh, mechanism. So ramp to temperature control is the one that we recommend for all applications with the exception of our EPA methodologies. So looking at a program, uh, we've got one here where we've got our max power uh, available is 1800 watts. So this means that you have 1800 watts available for use. It doesn't use the 1800 watts the whole time. It just uses what it needs to maintain the ramp and to also maintain the temperature during the hold. So again, you know, maybe a quarter gram or so of your sample, 10 mils of acid, the right combination that we mentioned earlier. We'll do a 20-minute ramp, hold it for 10 or 15 minutes, 
And like I said, also, most of the express applications operate in that 180 to 200. But this example here shows our maximum set point of 210 degrees C. All right, so now we're going to move over to our Easy Prep and Easy Prep Plus. These vessels will now do a little bit more temperature and pressure that you can get in the express. And Easy Prep and Easy Prep Plus, there's really only one difference between the two vessel types. Easy Prep has a molded Teflon wrap around the thermal well, and Easy Prep Plus uses an exposed sapphire thermal well, and we'll see a picture of this. And again, between the two vessel types, this is the only difference as far as the hardware goes. In the software on the system, we recognize which vessel you're using, and we use the appropriate ramp procedure based on Easy Prep, or is it Easy Prep Plus? With the Easy Preps, uh, to make sure we've got good, uh, a good sealing strength, we use a composite ring that we'll show you in a few minutes. Um, typical applications, the maximum is going to be 230 degrees C for organics and up to 300 C with inorganics. So for that organic with 230, we're talking about using uh, straight nitric up to 230. And with the inorganics, if you're running um, a sulfuric uh, acid combination for um, an inorganic sample type, then you can get near 300 uh, degrees Celsius. Now, with Express, we mentioned IR and I-Wave. With Easy Prep and Easy Prep Plus, we have the full, the full array available. You can use fiber optic alone. Then we also offer a combination called fiber optic and IR, and we typically, you may hear that termed duo temp or all vessel temperature control. And what that means is that you have a single control vessel with a fiber optic, but simultaneously the vessels are being viewed by the IR, and there's a dynamic control mechanism that will allow any one of those vessels to become the control vessel. Our last option for Easy Prep, Easy Prep Plus is called the I-Wave. So again, uh, like with, with uh, Express, we can use I-Wave with Easy Prep. The advantage here is that you have no fiber optic probe. Also, you have no pressure line. You have 12 standard vessels and no connections. This is made um, possible exclusively due to I-Wave. Uh, as mentioned, there is pressure control available. Again, it's not very common these days, uh, but if you do need to observe pressure or it's in a protocol, uh, that is available with Easy Prep and Easy Prep Plus. So as, as has been mentioned a couple of different times, the only difference is the control vessel. You'll see here, you'll see a vessel in the front that has uh, a stem coming out with a um, with a solid vent nut on top, that's your control vessel. And it also is taller than the rest of them. So that is uh, the one that will receive the fiber optic and or pressure control. But all of the other vessels are identical. So only the control vessel is different. So let's look at that a little bit further. With Easy Prep, we mentioned that it has a molded Teflon wrap around the um, thermal well. Well, that part that is labeled PT control cover is one solid molded piece, okay? And you see that silver ring? That's that ring that I was speaking about as far as helping with the sealing. This particular material is, a, is titanium. Titanium is a good material to use if you're doing a lot of uh, HF work. Well, I'm sorry, if you're doing a lot of HCL or aqua regia work, uh, titanium is a good choice uh, because our other material may get attacked by that. So the standard cover is the same. You've got your only difference being your control vessel and you see the big um, molded Teflon piece. So looking at Easy Prep Plus, the PT control cover, 
You see just the sapphire thermal well sticking out the bottom. So let's real quick click over. There's your molded Teflon for easy prep. Also notice the material is that silver for the ring. That is our titanium. And this one actually comes in, it's a stainless steel with a composite um, coating. And this is fantastic for nitric applications and HF applications. Uh, over time, HCL may start to attack um, this type of material when venting. That's why we also have the titanium available. Common applications for easy prep. Well, if you could do it in an express, fundamentally, temperature and pressure wise, you can do it. You can do it in an easy prep. Um, plus the ability to go to higher temps and pressure. So now we're starting to look at more like fuel oils as opposed to those light fractions of edible oils. So waste motor oils, uh, a little bit more difficult plastic such as polypropylene and polyethylene. And this is where we'll get into a total digest of some of these geological and mining samples because if you are using HF and you're, you're needing to go to 200, 210 degrees to get a complete digest of your silicates, here, here's the vessel you need to start using. Uh, again, the same, the same will go for metals and alloys. There's a lot of alloys that will require some sort of combination of acid that will include HF. Many of these are at temperatures that exceed 200 C. So easy prep, a great application, a great choice for that as well. Uh, once we start getting into some of the foods that are higher fat content, well, higher fat content is going to create more pressure. Also is going to uh, require a little more temperature sustained in order to break those down. Ceramics, again, it's not about pressure here. Ceramics is about the right acid cocktail, but also temperature. So now we're going to need higher temperatures and uh, some different acids. Also, um, we mentioned pharmaceutical ingredients with Express. Well, as we start moving up the chain and having more API or just um, digesting the active uh, pharmaceutical ingredient itself, these typically are big stable uh, rings and we need more temperature, more pressure, and easy prep. All right, the, the, the last vessel type is called the eye prep. And this is, you know, all of this is about choosing the right tool for the job. Well, the eye prep is now you're breaking out the sledgehammer. So with the eye prep, we are going to do higher temp, higher pressure concurrently than we've ever done at CEM. It assembles much like the Express. It's very, very easy to put together, very easy to torque down. And for organics with nitric only, we're looking at being able to go to 250 degrees Celsius, and you're starting to generate a lot of pressure. In organics, again, this is a material thing, uh, Teflon, so we're looking at 300 C for sulfuric applications. And as far as temperature control, our wave is the only way to run our prep. If there was no I wave, there would be no I prep. And it is completely um, connection free, contactless temperature, no pressure um, option is available. So with I preps, there's two there's two main um, thoughts here. We've got applications that we've never been able to do before in the easy prep, and then also easy prep applications, but we can do more. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. With I prep applications that we've not been able to do before, here are some examples from the polyethylene terephthalate pellets uh, to a thick bunker oil, Kevlar. Uh, we could digest Kevlar previously, but you had to use copious amounts of sulfuric acid and use an open vessel system. Now we're doing this in a closed vessel with nitric only and able to digest Kevlar. The same for the Torre filters. These are ionic filters used in the nuclear industry. Previously, a lot of sulfuric 
inside of an open vessel system. Now, straight nitric in a closed vessel. And APIs that have multiple rings, you all know that aromatic rings are stable by design. That's kind of what they do. And it takes a lot of temperature to break those apart. Now we can do that a lot easier in the opera. And then toners, you know, they're kind of difficult. There's a lot of silicates in there. Kind of a, kind of a, um, odd matrix to break apart. And then we'll show you also a rhodium catalyst, uh, using just straight HCL, the 240 degrees Celsius. Uh, but before we get there, let's take a look at some of the other, the, the, the other way to look at an op prep is that these are all fairly simple applications, but we're just doing more of it. So these are all applications that can be done in express or easy prep, but at much lower sample sizes. So again, op prep is a large, is allowing us larger sample sizes. And they go into higher temps and higher pressures concurrently when doing the same types of applications. So wet and dry infant formulas, we got some weights there for you. Um, a frozen entree here, we literally took a uh, frozen dinner, put it in a blender, uh, mashed it up, weighed out five grams. Now keep in mind, probably half of that is, is water weight, digested fine. Quartz, we have a customer that does high purity quartz. Uh, and then salami and pepperoni is very high fat content. So being able to do one and a half to two grams is, is actually a pretty big deal based on the fat content and how much pressure it generates. So looking at the opera vessel up at the top, you see the uh, torque block is a very simple a uh, handheld torque block requires very little effort to click. Um, it's uh, about 25% of the torque that we had to use with the easy prep vessel. And all of this is due to the design and the geometry of the vessel. Up here where you see patented dual seal, well, the engagement and interaction between that plug seal and that liner that is kind of where the magic happens. That's what allows us, uh, gives us the ability to do these applications and these sample sizes. Our elements uh, are retained because they're down in the liquid. And then you'll see a little diagram. There's our I-Wave temperature control that resides in the bottom of the cavity and looks up. And it's basically like having a fiber optic in every single vessel. So here's a quick animation on assembly. There's just a few parts, our sleeve, liner, plug. There's the load disc, put it in the frame. There's the frame screw. And then you will see a technician simply finger tighten the frame screw and very simply one click and it's done. It really is that easy. So now we're gonna take a look at a few temperature and power graphs and some samples that we've done here. Bunker oil, it really is that thick, it is that nasty, but there's an actual graph of uh, two samples that we ran 240 degrees Celsius. Coal, coal is a very interesting um, application because uh, coal comes in a variety of um, versions based on uh, carbon content, and sometimes you have to use a little bit of HF for silicates. Rhodium sponge uh, used for catalysts. Um, that is the actual sample after we brought it up to volume. Very nice, pretty color. But the important thing is, is that it is, is crystal clear as in you can see through it and it's completely particle free. And that was straight HCL up to 250 degrees Celsius. And here's the frozen dinner that I, I talked about earlier. You can see we didn't really, we only went to like 210 degrees. So it wasn't a thing about using a lot of temperature. It was the sample size. You know, we doubled the sample size here. And so now we're um, doing a regular application, but just more of it. Another use for the opera. So 
this is going to be an example of mixing samples. We've all heard uh, when using a batch system that we need same sample type, same acid, et cetera, because it is a batch. And that is all true. But this application note here is actually going to show you we maintain some continuity, but we still use a variety of sample types. All of our sample types are large hydrocarbons, but we use similar sample size, the same amount of acid, and they all went to the same temperature. So we had polyethylene, a difficult polymer, polypropylene, relatively simple to do, uh, bunker oil, very difficult oil, very thick, uh, very difficult to break down, and then a more routine waste oil that we commonly run uh, in the easy preps. So what we've done here is shown all four sample types, but keep in mind we did have same sample size and same acid. And here's the run. Th these are actual uh, images from the the run, our power and temperature curve looks very nice, and you see nice uh, um, nice um, correlation with the temperatures as well as we went to 240 degrees C. Here are actual images of the dilution. So the 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 two images on the right uh, labeled sample diluted to 50 mils. That's not just water. We actually after the digest. I uh, diluted these up and took these images of the more difficult samples, the bunker oil and the PET, crystal clear, colorless, and particle free. Exactly what you want in a digest. And so in uh, conclusion, um, you know, we've got the Express, Express Plus. We have a variety of um, sizes for you to run there. They can be run in the IR or I-Wave. Express Plus gives you a little more sample because it's 110 mils. Again, it can be used with IR and I-Wave. And then um, more of the focus on the I-Prep, um, more difficult samples than we've done before, um, larger samples of samples we have previously been able to do, easier to put together. They have to, it has to be I-Wave to use I-Prep and they, it is available in 12 and 16 position turntables. Uh, one thing that I, that I always like to tell people is that it being, if you are doing just pure inorganics and that's it, um, then you know don't don't discount the Easy Prep. The Easy Prep Easy Prep Plus is um, a very good vessel. Uh, we're saying the I Prep is replacing it simply because it was the next iteration. Easy Prep is fantastic for your inorganics, but the iPrep is the latest one, but it um, outperforms any vessel we've ever had when it comes to organic digest. So that concludes the presentation part of this. Thank you.